Alright tech family, with me is Lenovo's ThinkPad Z13, a highly requested laptop on this channel. Why? Because on the surface it ticks every box you could look for in a premium, super portable laptop. It's got a gorgeous edge-to-edge -edge display, a solid high-quality chassis, a comfortable ThinkPad keyboard, and the most desirable processor available in a PC laptop right now, an AMD Ryzen 6000U series one. From the outside, this looks like the perfect premium portable laptop, and it almost is, except two things. Now, I value your time, so I'm not going to make you watch the video to find out. The trackpad is really tough to get used to, and the pricing, starting at $2,000 is too high. But since it's still a very good laptop, here's my review. By the way, stating the obvious, as this is a premium laptop, my bar is higher than for laptops that cost a lot less. Screen is great. I have the 1920 by 1200 model. I was worried the display would seem noticeably more pixelated than the 4K Plus display on my Dell XPS with a similar size screen. It didn't. There was enough pixels for the small size screen. Brightness peaked at over 400 nits, which is great. Colors for on-screen content viewing were very good, but for editing photos or films on this laptop, the Adobe RGB and P3 coverage isn't as good as on a MacBook's display. The amount of content you can comfortably view on screen without needing to squint is determined by multiple factors, including screen brightness, pixel density, and screen size. When I ran my Excel test to see how much content I could see on screen without needing to squint, this laptop showed the least out of its competitors. I believe this is due to the lower pixel density and the slightly smaller 13.3 inch screen versus say the 13.4 inch of the XPS 13 Plus and the 13.6 of the MacBook Air M2. If you purchase a Z13 with a higher density 2880 by 1800 display, you may find yourself able to see more content on screen. The screen is 60 Hz and I detected no PWM flickering or annoying reflections during my use. Also, the touchscreen worked well and was a nice touch. The keyboard was one of the stars of the show. ThinkPads used to be known as having the most comfortable keyboards of any laptop available, but recent ThinkPads I've tested unfortunately took a turn for the worse. Their keyboards felt noticeably low travel. They weren't bad, but not at the heights of ThinkPads of old. The good news is this keyboard is back to feeling very comfortable to use. Yes, still a little low travel, but it's definitely one of the more comfortable laptop keyboards around. It has a satisfying click as you press the key. The downside is that it is loud. If you are an intense touch typer and you attend a lot of in-person meetings or classes, other people in the room will likely hear you typing and be distracted. A couple more notes on the keyboard. I am glad to see that this is the first ThinkPad I've used that uses a traditional keyboard layout and doesn't have the function and control key swapped. You could swap them back in Lenovo's Vantage software, of course, but it annoyed me that they had such fundamental keys in different places. Yes, I know ThinkPad lovers that it's a historical ThinkPad thing. The trackpad I don't love. In fact, I believe it is the biggest downside of this laptop. There are three reasons I don't like it. First, it's very slippery and hard to be accurate on, even when I tried slowing down the cursor speed. Second, if you use this laptop propped up on your lap, either in bed or on a couch, it has trouble registering your fingers' movements if something like a blanket or article of clothing is touching the trackpad. There were many times that I was using the laptop on the couch on a blanket and my finger gliding across the trackpad wasn't registered at all. And third, the trackpad has a physical line and dots in it that make gliding over this part of the trackpad feel disjointed and distracting. What's happened is to support the iconic red track point, they have removed the physical buttons for it that used to sit above the trackpad and instead expanded the trackpad size. This I like, but they have marked a part of the trackpad with this physical line to separate the button area for the track point. Unfortunately, this approach really screws up the trackpad experience. I'd suggest leaving the red track point and just going with a smooth trackpad surface. I feel we'll still know where to click. The chassis looks like a stylish business laptop, and when you touch it, it feels very high quality. The laptop is also light and portable. I was surprised to find it didn't come with Lenovo's super tiny 65W USB-C charger that came with my ThinkPad Nano. Instead, it came with a standard size one. I'd suggest buying the Nano's one, which I'll link below. By the way, I thought I wouldn't like the lip at the top of the screen housing the webcam, but it made the laptop super easy to open with one hand, which I liked. 
Ports are good enough on a super small laptop with a headphone mic combo jack and two fast USB 4 ports that both support charging. They are placed on either side of the laptop which means you won't have to run a power cable around the back if your outlet is on the other side of the laptop. A good thing as the cable can get in the way. Sound from the speakers is good, substantially louder than on my Dell XPS 13 Plus which honestly is way too quiet, but not as good as on a MacBook. Fingerprint Reader and Windows Hello Login both worked well and got me logged in fast. Here's how the Z13's webcam looks and sounds in excellent lighting conditions. Honestly, the colours look off. You can see there should be white behind me. I don't think it's auto detecting the white balance correctly. And for comparison, here's what the webcam looks and sounds like on the MacBook Pro 14. For performance, let's start with Geekbench which tests a variety of common short running tasks. It's substantially slower than the competition, particularly in single core. Switching to Cinebench which tests the laptop when it's under full CPU load. It performs very well, beating out both the Intel P-Series CPU in my Dell XPS 13 Plus and the M2 MacBook Air. This is not uncommon for AMD CPUs by the way. They tend to perform best in sustained heavy workloads, particularly as they run less hot than Intel CPUs and therefore don't have to be throttled as much to keep the CPU at a safe operating temperature. That being said, in this small chassis, Lenovo struggles to keep this powerful AMD CPU cool. When I ran Cinebench R23 continuously for a 10 minute torture test, you can see a large drop in performance. You can see the power fed to the processor drops substantially during that time, more so than on my Intel Dell XPS 13 Plus. Please note, the MacBook Air M2 doesn't have a fan at all, so the reason it is dropping is because reducing the power fed to the processor is the only lever it has to keep that device cool. CPU temperatures all peaked at 100 degrees or more in the case of my MacBook Air M2. By the way, as you may have seen in these graphs, I really didn't notice any performance difference from running the laptop in its extreme performance mode versus the default intelligent cooling. And yes, all firmware, drivers and software are the latest. When it comes to heat you feel when the laptop is under full load, the laptop feels very warm to the touch. Fan noise is loud, but not quite as loud as competitors. For everyday use though, I found my Dell XPS 13 Plus with Intel 12th Gen P series faster than this laptop. When I was logged into a work environment via Citrix while on a Zoom call with about 10 browser tabs open, I noticed a little lag on the Z13 that I didn't notice on my Intel laptop. That was when both laptops were running on their default performance mode by the way. I also heard more fan noise on this laptop than on the XPS. Honestly, my two cents, this chassis can't adequately cool this powerful Ryzen 7 8 core processor. If you are going to buy this laptop, I'd lean towards buying one with the cheaper less powerful Ryzen 5 6 core model. It's likely better suited for this laptop. By the way, the integrated graphics performance of the Ryzen 6000 U series CPU is much better than Intel. So if you're planning to game on your laptop and are choosing between an Intel or AMD without dedicated graphics, get AMD. When on battery, performance does drop a bit. Less than on my Intel XPS 13 Plus though. For my battery life test, I set all settings for the best possible battery performance. Then I lowered the screen brightness to around 200 nits. I played a Netflix movie on repeat over Wi-Fi for 4 hours. At the end of the test I recorded 66% battery remaining, which is very good. If we extrapolate out, you should be able to hit close to 12 hours on the Z13 with the display I have. I did retest my XPS 13 Plus at the same time and it had 49% remaining. However, my XPS does have the higher resolution 4K display which likely draws more power. But on the flip side, the Z13 has a smaller battery at 51.5 watts versus the XPS's 55. This is a fantastic result for the Z13 and really shows off the power efficiency of the AMD processor. Let's wrap talking about pricing. This laptop is very expensive. On Lenovo's side it starts at over 2000 US dollars. That's for the 6 core Ryzen 5 model by the way, and for the Ryzen 7 model that I have more than 2500. I did find it a lot cheaper on B&H's site for $2000 for the model I have. I'll place a link to that in the description below if you want to buy this laptop. But Overall, I really think that this is a bit too expensive. That's around $500 more than the XPS 13 Plus and $300 or so more than the MacBook Air M2 upgraded with similar specs. Overall, this is a very solid premium portable laptop and you'll most likely be happy if you buy it, particularly if you're someone who mostly uses the laptop on a desk and or uses an external mouse. That way you'll avoid the trackpad issues that I had.
Compared to the XPS 13 Plus, this laptop doesn't have the quirks that that one has, such as non-physical function buttons. This laptop's speakers are better, its graphics are more powerful, it has longer battery life, and this laptop rarely feels warm to the touch. The XPS on the other hand has a quieter keyboard, better CPU performance in most tasks, and less fan noise. If they were priced the same, I'd probably slightly lean you towards purchasing the Z13 over the XPS. The MacBook Air M2 has a larger screen, it also has long battery life, it has no fan noise at all, and it looks sexier. The Z13 has a more comfortable keyboard, and it can run Linux, which by the way, worked well. If priced the same, I'd probably get the MacBook Air. But that's the issue, they aren't priced the same. Even at the best pricing I could find, this laptop, it needs to drop by several hundred dollars for me to consider it. There just isn't enough here for me to definitively say, go buy it over other premium portable laptops, especially with its trackpad. And on the trackpad note, I personally use these laptops that I review as my daily driver. And I'm so glad that this review is over. Having to use this laptop for the last couple of weeks with its trackpad, it was challenging. Well, that's all for today, folks. If you like this video, you know what to do. Smash that like button and get subscribed. Not only does it show your appreciation for the insane amount of work that goes into making these videos, but as I always say, it makes my mother very proud. Not many folks, by the way, have followed me on Twitter, Instagram, or TikTok, so please do so, links below. On Twitter especially, I talk a lot about upcoming tech that I'm working on. Anyway, go do something awesome with your day and I will catch you later.